Hello, good afternoon. Good day to you. This is IVU from Orange Tea and Thai Learning and Development Department. Welcome to our afternoon series of experience. Today is our episode one, sharing with you tips on unmistaken HDB enhanced contra transactions. Let's go. A little bit about myself. My name is IVU, EYU. I've been practicing real estate since 1996. I specialize on residential property, HDBs, and um, private condominiums for both sales and rental. So a couple of years, we have been doing quite a lot on uh, HDB transactions. And I also handle peculiar cases such as divorce, bankruptcy, and death of ownership. So very commonly, we have cases where we help clients buy and sell properties. Therefore, at times, we have this thing called the enhanced contra facilities. This is a HDB case whereby the sellers are selling and buying at the same time. So for myself, I've been uh, doing this uh, real estate and also sharing of my cases as a trainer in Orange Tea since a couple of years back. So what is an enhanced HDB contract? It is a buying and selling of flat A and B with the same client. So later on, I will actually have a case study to share with you how it works. So for selling of flat A and flat B, first of all, we need to assist our client to help them maneuver their CPF money and also their cash within the properties to sell flat A and buy flat B. And of course, because it's a HDB transactions, there are certain criteria and scenario whereby you can uh, actually go through this uh, contract. These are the four scenarios whereby only is able to do this enhanced contract facility. First, it has to be a HDB loan to HDB loan. So for clients currently with HDB loan, they can actually take a second HDB loan for their next purchase. Second, is HDB loan to fully pay. If, for example, they have currently with a small little uh, balance on their HDB loan, then they would like to fully pay off their current property, uh, the next purchase. Third, fully paid to fully paid. There are also cases where I see mature couples, they would like to sell away their current HDB and then downgrade or uh, buying a smaller flat so that they can fully pay up the other flat. And number four, fully paid up to HDB second loan. This will require financial calculation to see if they are eligible for the HDB second loan. So the above is all related to HDB enhanced contract, whereby only HDB loan or fully paid cases is able to do this facility. If your client is having bank loan, then I'm so sorry, they are not eligible for this contract facility. So let's move on to this case study where we will see Mr. and Mrs. Tan, uh, how actually I help them to do a buy and sell. Mr. and Mrs. Tan like to sell their HDB executive mansion at PTR Road, which is located at Bukit Banjang, and buy a four-room flat in Bukit Batu because they would like to shift nearer to their kids who are married and got a BTO flat in Bukit Batu. They will also like to do a full payment for the next HDB flat because they are actually semi-retired. So they would like to downgrade from their big executive machinic flat to a smaller four-room flat so that they can easily manage the cleaning and you know when their kids uh, and grandchildren visit them. So what are the things to look out for when we are helping a client with this uh, situation? First of all, you have to ask them if they have any outstanding mortgage loan under HDB or bank. So again, let me repeat. If they are having outstanding loan with bank, they are not able to do this enhanced contract. So for Mr. and Mrs. Tan case, they have already fully paid up their executive mention it, and they would like to buy their four-room flat also fully paid up. So definitely they are eligible for enhanced uh, HDB contract. Second, that looks at the seller's age because for Singaporeans or PR above the age of 55, your ordinary account savings will be different. It will become a retirement account. So do take note that if the sellers at, are actually reaching 55 or after 55, you need to ask them to log into their CPF page to double check on their status. Third, seller savings. 
do they have some savings on hand? Because moving of houses require fundings. For example, they need to do renovation and of course they also need to pay agent fee. So it's very important that the sellers should have a substantial amount of cash on hand. Next, let's look at the timing. Take for example, they want to sell like at the end of the year or Chinese New Year period. Then this will be quite a little bit challenged because festive period is not easy to market a property. On the other hand, if this couple has schooling kids, they may also be looking at June holidays, December holidays to move. So when you are planning the marketing stage, it's important that you have to be go online and uh, together with them so that over later on, I'll be sharing you with you the HDB process timeline on how do we actually manage a contract facility. Next, flat A, the buyers have to allow extension of stay for Mr. and Mrs. Tan because when they buy for flat B, they do need a minimum renovations. So when we look out for the flat for them, we also have to consider that. And for the flat B, the sellers of flat B have to allow Mr. and Mrs. Tan to have this early renovation whereby they will proceed to sign on this HDB indemnity form. This is one of the very important process where if we do not have a flat B that allows them for early renovation, then their move in and out timing will be challenged. So we move on to this, what happens before and after the age of 25 if you were to sell your flat? Mainly your CPF money will be in a different situation. So if you sell your flat before the age of 55, you will need to refund your principal amount plus accrual interest to your ordinary account. And subsequently, you can use 100% to buy the next house with your OA savings. However, if you were to sell your flat after the age of 55, then you will need to take note. Besides the refund of principal sum and accrual interest, they will need to have side asset a sum of money for their retirement account called RA. So how much will the RA be? It depends on a yearly basis. Every July of the year, HD, uh, this uh, CPF will actually announce what is the minimum sum. So it also depends on what scheme that they are looking at. So then again, you have to ask your client to log into mycpf.government.sg to double check on that. And subsequently, after the retirement sum is already filled up, then they are able to use the balance of the CPF to buy the next property. I'll move on to the seller financial calculation. This is a scenario for Mr. and Mrs. Tan. For them, selling their EM is fully paid. So I will do a market analysis and double check. So I've managed to find that the sale price of their EM is approximately 630,000. So after doing a search and confirm with them, they have a CPF refund including accrual interest total amount at 450000 So by using the resale price, the possible resale price minus of the CPF refund including accrual interest, they are able to get a possible sales receipt proceeds of 180000 This is more than sufficient for them to move house. But on the other hand, I will also need to check their available CPF in their current OA. Now, why is this so? Because in the buying and selling of a HDB flats using Contra, if they do not have the sufficient money in their current OA, they may need to use cash to top up for the stamp fees and legal fees. So it's important to check with them too. So for Mr. and Mrs. Tan case, because they do have the sufficient in their CPF OA account, I will tell them about the HDB legal fees and of course the agent fees. So all this for selling itself, they will be able to get a possible sales proceed 180,000 minus of the agent fee and the HDB processing fee left about 165,000 and more. And of course, their 100% CPF 450 k is able to buy the next flat. So on the other side for flat B, we will calculate for their four room purchase. After checking HDB uh, transactions, I was able to see that the four room located at Bukit Batok is approximately 470,000 at value. So assuming they are buying at value, they are able to use their CPF refund 450,000 
plus their current CPF in OA. So I will use that as a total available CPF highlighted in blue, 518,000. And I'll calculate for them their stamp fee. Now stamp fee is applicable for them uh, because they are buying and selling at the same time plus it's a HDB property. So there is no ABSD required. They only required to pay the normal stamp fee formula minus 5,004. So this 8,007, we can use their existing OA to pay it off. And subsequently, with that amount, minus of the 8,007, they have 509,300K, whereby they are able to buy the next uh, HDB flat. Then I will go through with them, what are the other costs for buying? Conveyancing by HDB is estimated about up to 350000 uh, sorry, $350. Cash for option and exercise option, I will help them by reducing it to 500 to 500 because they have more than enough CPF. So actually, they don't need to pay so much cash in terms of the option fee and the exercise option fee. Then the HDB registration fee is $80. Request to value is $120. And not forgetting, there will be an agent fee plus GST of 1% for buying. So in all, I will calculate for Mr. and Mrs. Tan, they are fully used up all their CPF and they do have some in excess. Plus, they need to fork out 6,000 plus for the uh, transaction and costings. So I will tell them, yes, it's very good. For their case, we can go ahead to sell their executive mansion and buy a four-room flat in Bukit Batu. So next, I will proceed to explain to my clients how the HDB process timelines will be. Let's talk about the normal sale whereby there is no extension of stay. We will sell flat A, get the option fee, exercise option fee, and subsequently submit to HDB resale portal. Within the first two weeks, you'll be receiving HDB acknowledgement that they have received your case and processing. Subsequently, another two weeks later, the clients will be informed they will need to do an online acknowledgement of documents. And followed by another four weeks, total of eight weeks upon receiving the application, HDB will do up their completion appointment. For Mr. and Mrs. Tan case, because it's an enhanced HDB control, we will need to have this extra application called the uh, extension of stay and agree by the buyer of flat A. So they will have up to 12 weeks to move up. So proceeding with buying on flat B for Mr. and Mrs. Tan, during this time when I'm selling their flat, I will recommend that you will also bring them to see um, the current flats uh, for room available on sale. Why is this so? So that you can actually prep them and uh, kind of shortlist some of the properties in the market. So for selling of flat A, once you find a buyer, we still need to wait for the 21 days to allow the buyer to exercise option first before we place the option for the purchase of flat B. This is very important because as long as there's no exercise of option, it's not considered a done deal. So when we are doing the negotiation for flat A, we need to also inform the buyer of flat A about the extent stay and also 40 to 60 days submission. This is just in case we do need extra time for Mr. and Mrs. Tan to find their flat B. So while we are processing the whole two case together, when we submit or the, according to the resale portal, receive the acknowledgement from HDB and acknowledge online documents. Then subsequently, we have this HDB in principle approval letter. Now, this HDB approval letter, approval letter is very important because there are some cases whereby completion is delayed because of some grant issue by the buyer or certain uh, eligibility issue. So in order for us to proceed on with this enhanced contract facilities, making sure everything is smoothly in place, you will need to have this HDB in principle approval letter before we can move ahead with the other step by asking the flat B owner to allow us early renovation permit. So by signing the HDB indemnity form, it is very important because over there, there are terms and conditions on how the handover will be. So according to my chart over here, you can see I highlighted in the red dotted box, we will only be able to sign the HDB indemnity form. And by the time, of course, we need to find a flat B 
whereby the seller of flat B will be moving out already. So when we do this timeline together, it's very important because we need to have extend stay for flat A and then an early renovation request for flat B. So when we do a buy and sell like this, the timeline we need to calculate for them in the next upcoming two weeks, three weeks, and even uh, two to three months. It may seem very difficult, but no worries. As long as you have already planned out the dates for them, we will be good in pace. So the whole case will require actually two parts. The submission of the resale portal have to be back to back within seven days of submission to HDB. And then the HDB completion will be together for the two flats. So all three parties, seller of flat A is the buyer of flat B, buyer of flat A and the seller of flat B. So total, there will be three parties in the case. The whole case will roughly complete within 12 to 16 weeks. That is three to four months. So what you will need to prepare your client, the selling process and the buying process together. So what happens if one of the party they can't commit, then I'm so sorry, the contract case will not be able to move ahead. Why? Because in HDB context rules and regulations, only one party is allowed to contract, meaning that only Mr. and Mrs. Tan, who is the seller of flat A and the buyer of flat B, is able to do contract. So there are questions being asked uh, by some Orange D associates for related to enhanced contract. What if the buyer of flat A is taking a bank loan or the seller of flat B is having an outstanding bank loan? Can we still go ahead to do the contract? Yes, you can, because they are not considered a contract party. The contract party is actually only Mr. and Mrs. Tan, whom they have an outstanding HDB loan or fully paid up, or buying the next flat with HDB loan or fully paid up. So regarding the other two parties, if they have a bank loan, will not affect the whole HDB contract facility. So this HDB timeline, it's very important, we need to advise them. So if we are selling their flat at the end of the year or early of the year where festive period is, you will need to take in place, perhaps the 60 days open up option may not be sufficient because um, during festive period, the the, law, uh, the HDB legal and uh, HDB officers may not be open. Okay. Okay, so do remember, for any HDB contract facilities, it's always good for you to check their financial obligation, financial um, situation before we move ahead. And always remember, HDB has a one-stop platform for all salesperson to obtain the latest information on policies and procedures. It is also important for us to possess the needed competencies and skills so that he or she will be able to offer uh, accurate advice to your clients. Should you have any further questions regarding to HDB contra facility, you can send an email to orange tea, uh, learning and orange tea.com and we will be able to assist you. Thank you for watching this uh, live streaming on episode one for this uh, sharing. Have a good day.